So looking at part two of Iyanla Fix My Life with Nephi and Solo, aka Shelby, whatever you want to call them. I just got through watching it. So the only thing I get out of this is that Nephi is a damaged individual. She's a damaged ass person. And um, it's just based on everything that has happened to her in her life. Like she got raped at an early age. I mean, she ran away to be with a crackheaded ass mama. I mean, it's a lot of stuff that she has seen in her life. And I just want to say that. A lot of the thing, a lot of the reasons why she's the way she is, is because of her mama. If you even look at Frankie and Nephi's show, or even the show with Keisha Cole, rather, Nephi has ne not Nephi. Frankie has never ever in life wanted to take responsibility for her role in Nephi's upbringing and her role as in Nephi's declining state of mind, like. You are the reason why this woman is still miserable to this day. Because she was miserable when she was growing up. She was miserable when she was out there on the streets with you. Trying to be, trying to have a relationship with you. She was miserable then. And she grew up being miserable. And now she's almost 40 years old. And she's still miserable. And it has a lot to do with the way that you... You know, the way that you wasn't around. You were an absentee mother. Like, you were around but was absent. For most of her life, like, she grew up with relatives. She, you know, grew up trying to find you. She grew up running away from home trying to get your attention. So, I mean, look at, and then look at the pattern. Like, she go from man to man to man to man to man to man to man. Just like you did. Man to man to man to man to man. She got an alcohol problem. You had a drug problem. It's the same pattern, but a different situation. You put that cycle out there and you started that and you never in life, you never want to take responsibility for that period. You never do. You know what I'm saying? And I wish you was on the show, but you never want you. I blame all of this here on Frankie because it's, it's all the same pattern. A woman with a, with a, with a drug problem. Fucks man after man, get pregnant by man after man, have all these damn kids and can barely take care of them. Well, in Frankie's case, can't take care of them. So I got to give them up for adoption and give them to somebody else. Then you got Nefertiria. I have a drinking problem. I'm living in the hood. Um, I'm going from man to man, getting pregnant by damn near all of them. And I got all these damn kids. I got a whole damn soccer team of children and can barely take care of them or myself. It's the same situation. Don't you see how that mirrors Frankie? You know what I'm saying? And then you then you know you get into a marriage, this man. You have three kids by this man. Then you fuck around with another man. You got a kid by that man. Then you fuck around with Shelby. You get a kid. Like you just... You know what I'm saying? And then you got Shelby who has um, a just about just as much trouble past as she does with being molested and watching all sorts of shit going in his life. You got two damaged people. And see, I was really blind. I was really going in on the young loan, the last review that I did because I felt like she was going in so hard on Nephi. But watching the second part, it's just like, I'm like, okay, I see why Iyanla giving her all of this harshness, this harsh dose of reality. Because Nephi really acts like she don't understand the part that she plays in the fucked up marriage that she has with Solo. She plays a big part in it. I honestly do think that Nephi likes drama. Why? Because that's all she ever been around. She probably gets a rise out of drama. That probably makes a pussy wig to have drama. That's what I think. Because she love it. But that's how she knows. This man want to get away from the drama. He grew up with drama. So that's what he wants to get away from. But because that's all he knows. That's what he going to run to. Nephi full of drama. So of course that's the first place he going to run to is Nephi. Because that bitch is action packed with fucking drama. And we all know that. So that ain't nothing new there. But... I don't know. I just think that um, in hindsight, I just really believe that Nephi just needs to get over herself. Like she acts like she wants to she wants to portray herself to be over this whole rape situation and she's not. Because a person that's over 
a rape would not be thinking about the nigga that raped them and trying to confront him while he's in jail. If you really was over it, you wouldn't even want to see that motherfucker, to be honest, in my opinion. But I can't really speak on that at the same time because I've never been raped, never been molested. I don't want to be in that situation. So thank God I wasn't in that situation. But, you know, I don't think she's really over that rape. You know what I'm saying? I don't think she's over it. Just like... I don't think that my mom is necessarily over being molested as a child. I don't think that she's that much over it. You know, that's the thing. I don't, and honestly, I don't think you get over that. That's just something that, that's a memory that's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. I don't think that being molested is something that you really get over. Just like the death of a parent is something that you don't really get over. Or the death of a child is something that you don't really get over. Or even if your grandmother was the one that raised you or something like that, a death of a grandparent, that's not something that you really get over. You, you just learn to deal with it. You don't really get over that. You know what I'm, you get what I'm saying? You don't really get over something like that. Like something that big and something that dramatic, traumatic to you. I don't think you really get over that. I just think you learn to live with the fact that it happened and move on. Just like I know that Solo ain't over the fact that he lost a child. He had a child at 12 and lost a child at 17. That's not something that you get over. That's something that you learn to deal with. Um, him being molested. I don't think Solo is over being molested. I think that that's something that he just learned to deal with. He learned to try to move on from. That's not something you get over. You know? You don't get over that. Like when you go through a big traumatic experience, you don't get over that. You remember it for the rest of your days. I'm at the age to where a lot of things just roll off my shoulder. But I don't think I could really say that I'm over watching my mom being, you know, abused and shit like that. Being in a being in an abusive relationship. Because that's something that I grew up watching. I don't think that I'm completely over that. Because I do have memories of it sometimes. And I, when certain things happen, it, it makes me remember it. That's why I don't like to speak on the situation. That's why I don't like to speak on the person. Because all it really does is dredge up old memories of what happened. It's a lot of stuff that I can say that happened that I just won't say that happened. Because it's just that despicable to me and it makes me upset to even talk about it. That's why when I hear the name, I be like, change the subject. Because they don't do nothing but bring back memories for me as a child. Like, I remember everything that happened. I remember... I remember the bloodshed. I remember the 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 ice storm. I remember everything. So I don't like to even when stuff like that goes on and we gotta talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. It comes off as a rude thing, but I don't forget it because I remember it. It the 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 memory stays on my mind. I will never forget it. So when I say that I'm completely over that, no, you just I just learned to to deal with it. And move on. That's not something that I will ever get past. You know what I'm saying? Like even when things got better after the situation. I still remember it. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's never going to go away. So like rape and abuse and stuff like that. You don't really get over that. Like my mother was abused by her mom. She ain't over that. And she ain't going to never get over that. Especially when a person doesn't take responsibility for what the fuck they did to you. Maybe if a person takes responsibility for the things that they've done to you, it'll take a weight off your shoulder. Maybe if the person that raped you take responsibility for it, then you could probably say, okay, I done got over it. But even then, I don't think you can get over it because it, it triggers, it affects your your life as you, go, as you go along. Because my mother was raped and molested, she's awfully protective over all three of us. And sometimes it can be annoying as fuck. But I understand why. Because I was bullied and taunted and teased every day at school. That's why I react to things the way that I react to things. Sometimes things can just be a joke. 
But I don't take it as a joke. I take it as you're trying to be a malicious little bitch towards me. And you're going to get cussed the fuck out. Like, it, it fucks with your mental state. So, a lot of the things that happen to you as a child, the traumatic things that happens to you when you're young, it alters the way you think for the rest of your fucking days. And as much as you try to change it, it's hard to get that out of you. Like, I don't give a damn. I don't care. If, any, if I feel like anybody's being malicious to me, you need to let me know that you're just playing or you're going to get it. Simple as that. Anything can make me mad. Anything can trigger me. If I think if I'm thinking that you're coming for me, I'm coming right back. I've I've learned to ignore certain stuff now, but it's still certain things that triggers the hell out of me, and I and I'll be ready to pop off at any given second. You know, it's just that I just in, in closing of this review, the only thing I can say is this: you can't bring a lot of baggage into the next relationship because. The person that did that to you in the past wins automatically when you bring the dumb shit that they did to you into this new relationship with this new person. This new person ain't got a goddamn thing to do with what happened with this previous motherfucker that did you like a dog. They don't have a damn thing to do with that. So why even put them through the pressure and the drama and the bullshit of them, you know, why why put them through that? They they don't deserve to even go through that type of shit. I just feel like it's it's doing a disservice to you and that person when you do that. Don't put them through that shit because you had to deal with that. You know what I mean? Like it ain't cool to do that. So, what like don't get into another relationship until you until you know that you're past certain things. Now, because of what a person did to you, you might come into the relationship scared and scarred and maybe even scorned. And it's, it's, it's perfectly okay, but don't treat somebody like shit because the previous person treated you like shit. And I think that's what Nephi did with Solo because every other man in her life and even her mom treated her like shit. She felt like she needed to treat, treat this motherfucker like shit. I mean, it, it, it's a give and take thing with the both of them because they both went through the same shit. So I think that everybody needs to let go of all their baggage and start with a clean slate. Before they decide to hop into a relationship or marriage or anything. That's just with any type of situation. Bottom line. I don't give a fuck what it is. You can't bring old shit into your new shit. Because the old shit. As old and ancient as it is. It'll touch your new shit. And then you will be out of order as a person. Out of order. And that's all I got to say about. Iyala. Out of here. It's about time for me to start getting ready for work and shit. But when I come back, it'll be time for me to do my review on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Hopefully it's good tonight. And I'm out of here, y'all. See y'all later. Peace.